Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is called What is Umami? You can also take my 104 lesson cooking course called Learning to Cook Like a Pro One Small Plate at a Time. It starts off easy, it gets progressively more difficult, and it ends with the ultimate challenge, which is five lessons in one. You can also much watch my other series like Italian Faves, Impress Your Date, Sauces to Die For, Spain on a Small Plate, and bonus lessons like uh, How to Make Stock or How to Break Down a Chicken. But this lesson is about umami. Now, what is umami? Now, in Western cooking, there are four basic flavors, bitter, sweet, salty, and sour. And until recently, these were believed to correspond to particular taste buds on the tongue. Now, scientists are saying, well, maybe these basic tastes don't correspond to particular taste buds, okay? But it doesn't really matter. We have four basic tastes in Western cooking, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter, all right? Now, there's a fifth taste called umami, and this is associated with Japanese cooking. Now, what exactly is the taste of umami? Well, there is no direct translation for the Japanese word umami. It has been loosely translated as savory or savoriness, tasty or tastiness, delicious or deliciousness. It's also been called the essence of flavor and the foundation of taste. And one of the best descriptions I've heard of umami is, is what you call a flavor or a taste when you don't know what else to call it, all right? Now, I translate umami as yummy or yumminess. And it's easy to remember because it sounds like umami. And sometimes I also say you yummy or you mummy, all right? So I translate umami as yummy or yumminess. Now, what is the taste of umami? Now, it, it is a complex taste. It's more than just sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. All right? It's more than just that. It's a complex taste or flavor. It provides a mouth-watering sensation, and it has a long finish, so you'll taste it a while after you have uh, finished chewing and swallowing the food, and it coats the tongue, all right? So no wonder it has been translated as deliciousness. It's no wonder that I call it yumminess, all right? Now, you can't say that umami was exactly discovered because it was always there, right? But it was identified uh, in Japan by a professor, um, Kakune Ikeda, in 1908, and he named it umami. Now, he identified glutamic acid, aka glutamate, uh, which um, uh, we have an artificial version of glutamate called uh, monosodium glutamate, or MSG, which a lot of people like to avoid. But uh, glutamic acid, or glutamate, occurs naturally in a lot of foods. Um, it has also, umami's also been associated with uh, sodium acinosate, did I say that right? Yes, and uh, sodium guanolate. Uh, and often all of these are present in food at the same time, and they provide a synergistic effect, so the sum is greater than all of the parts. Now, where can you find umami? Well, let's, let's take an apple, for example. Now, an apple can be sweet or it can be sour, all right? And it can be both at the same time. Uh, and uh, they're not salty and they're not bitter. Maybe sometimes they can be a little bit bitter. Uh, but there's something more. There's an essential appleiness, right? There's a, an apple yumminess, right? And that is umami. Now, where else can we find it? Now, we can certainly find it in Japanese food. And in fact, we can find it in all of the pillars of Japanese food. In every single one of the pillars of Japanese food, they're all loaded with umami. Now, one is uh, kelp. And um, kelp is uh, used in many different ways in Japan. But one of the main ways it's used is in the, a type of kelp called kombu, K-O-M-B-U, or K-O-N-B-U. I've seen it spelled both ways. And it's a dried kelp, and it has a white powder, crystalline powder on the outside of it. And that is naturally occurring uh, glutamate, all right? Now, um, this kombu is used to make dashi. Dashi is a stock, a liquid stock, and it is the basis of 
many, many different types of Japanese foods and sauces and soups, all right? Now, I have separate lessons on making dashi, and I also have a lesson called demystifying Japanese dashi-based sauces. Um, also, it can be found in all of the other pillars of Japanese cooking, and one of them is bonito flakes, also known as katsuobushi, all right? And these are the dried and shaved, uh, dried and shaved skipjack tuna, all right? And this is also the other basic ingredient of dashi. Dashi is only made with two things, or three things, water, um, kanbu, and katsuobushi, or bonito flakes, all right? Also, um, shoyu, or Japanese soy sauce, is umami rich, all right? And also uh, miso, which is um, fermented soybeans, and it, it's made in many different varieties. And this is also a pillar of Japanese cooking. It's used in many different things, and it is umami rich. And also sake. Sake is important for drinking uh, in Japan, but it's also used in cooking and in many sauces. And it has umami on its own after it's, been, um, after it's been made. But one of the reasons that it has umami is because it's made with something called koji. And koji is a, a friendly mold that's used to inoculate rice. And then that rice is used to make uh, sake. Koji can also be used to make other things, uh, such as uh, miso, for example. And uh, it can be used as marinade, and it provides a lot of umami. You can get koji powder, for example, and use it as a sprinkling on food or as a marinade. Now, where can you find um, umami outside of Japanese cooking? Well, basically, you can find it almost anywhere. And maybe, as I'll talk about a little bit later, maybe you can find it anywhere, okay? Now, you can find it in uh, mushrooms and in truffles. And mushrooms, by the way, are used in a lot of Japanese food. And they have a whole lot more varieties of mushrooms in Japan than we have here. A whole lot more varieties. Uh, but as I said, mushrooms and truffles. Also, in onions and in garlic. You can also find umami in the pillars of Italian food, which are uh, tomatoes right, uh, and Parmesan cheese. And uh, th these two things together you give you an umami-rich meal. And it's no surprise, really, that these are pillars of Italian cooking. And also, of course, ketchup has umami. Also, Worcestershire, Wor Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce has uh, a lot of umami. And also green things like asparagus or uh, avo, or uh, I say avo, but avocado. And also starchy things like corn and potatoes. And if you look at these things on the screen, you'll see this is virtually everything we eat, right? And they're loaded with umami. Also, animal proteins have umami. Now, the food itself has umami. The, the animal protein itself has umami, such as chicken or beef or uh, seafood, right? But also, when you grill or you brown animal proteins, uh, something happens called the Maillard reaction, all right? It's named after someone. And this is a browning reaction, and it happens before caramelization, and it's caused by the interaction of amino acids and sugar in the food, right? And it improves the aroma, the color, and the taste of foods. And basically, uh, when you brown a food, you're creating more umami, right? Also, I would say that charred foods have umami because although foods can get a little bitter when you uh, char them, there's something more than just the bitterness. It's the friendly part of that taste, and, uh, and, and that is umami. Now, viewing umami can be a matter of perspective. So far in this video, I've been talking about it narrowly, okay, as the fifth taste. But we can also view it more broadly as being the taste of virtually all foods. In other words, there's more to the taste of every food than simply salty, sweet, bitter, or sour. There's something more there, okay? So we could view umami in the broad sense as the rest of the flavor, the rest of the flavor, which is, is kind of like the uh, Japanese description of umami as being the essence of flavor or the foundation of taste. So I hope this video has helped you to understand umami. Remember, think yummy, okay? Think yummy or yumminess. Think you yummy, think you mummy, all right? 
Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.